Well, in today's edition of Live on Live, this Wednesday, I'm joined by Manuel Lafont Rapnoui, who heads the European Council on Foreign Relations here in Paris. And today, we're going to take a look at where France stands at the moment with regard to its foreign policy, but more importantly, of course, what the potential outcome for France's relations abroad will be if either centrist Emmanuel Macron is elected or far-right Marine Le Pen takes the Elysee Palace. Manuel, you're welcome back to Paris Live PM. Good afternoon. Now, firstly, let's have a look at French foreign policy, well, as it stands, but let's just say over the last five years under the socialist president, François Hollande, what stands out in his legacy in foreign policy over the last five years? There are probably three things which really stand out. The first thing is uh, the military intervention that France has uh, led, whether in Mali, Central uh, African Republic. Mm. And, and you have those which took place and also those who, which didn't take place, the, the famous or infamous uh, mm. plan to strike Syria in uh, September 2013 after the chemical attacks mm, the uh, in the Syria suburbs Iran, of yeah. Damascus mm. uh, some years ago. Uh, but that that is something very striking, and and the French have now been dubbed not surrendering monkeys, but uh, cheese eating cheese surrendering eating, yeah, cheese eating monkeys, surrender monkeys, but monkeys. frogs of war <laughs> frogs is, of is war. the new joke. So, um, th there's the, the other thing is very assertive on Syria, for instance, mm -hmm. but also on Iran. Uh, sometimes it worked on Iran, it did. Uh, sometimes it didn't on Syria. And, and the last thing which really stand out is COP twenty one, the, the deal on climate change. And that's interesting because it's not security, it shows that French foreign policy is not just security obsessed. It goes through the UN also. Sure. And, and that's a good argument against those who have thought that maybe uh, uh, Hollande sometime looked like the new neoconservative. Indeed. But it, the, the thing is now, you know, we're looking at conservatives, neoliberals, neoconservatives. How much did the foreign policy differ from his predecessor, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy? There is one thing which was make, it situational. Was it exactly? Yeah. There's one thing which make them very different. It's the situation was mm. very different. Mm. Um, Sarkozy's term was dominated by the economic crisis sure. very much, and and uh, Hollande's has been uh, dominated by security threats. So mm. that that's a big difference. There's also a difference in style, and in foreign policy, style is often uh, substance. Um, but, but there are key common challenges. The one very interesting case is Libya, because that was at the end of Sarkozy's term, and it did push very much for the decision to intervene militarily. And then Hollande was stuck with dealing with the consequences, the aftermath of the intervention. Well, Libya was a real disaster, really. I mean, it's, it's been a foreign policy disaster for anybody who set their foot on it. Uh, is a, <laughs> looking into the crystal ball now, we have Marine Le Pen versus Emmanuel Macron. What are the big strategy differences that we're going to see between these people? One of the very striking things is when both of them speak, they speak about independence almost first and foremost. Mm. And yet they have a very different understanding of what independence is. Uh, it's, it's a different strategy versus globalization. One, Marine Le Pen says you need to basically pull out from Schengen, the Euro, uh, the NATO integrated command, maybe the EU even, and protect yourself from the outside world. Mm. Whereas... Uh, Macron says that you need to uh, be an actor in globalization. You need to shape it. Mm. And that also informs very big difference, for instance, in terms of how you manage big power politics. Yeah. The one striking difference between the two is how to deal with Russia. Obviously, uh, for instance, Emmanuel Macron thinks that the sanctions could, should be maintained as long as the Minsk agreement on Ukraine is not implemented, mm. whereas Basically, Marine Le Pen believes that Crimea as annexation was legal and the sanctions should it's be lifted anyway. It's part of Russia now and just let's get on with that. And of course, she met with uh, Vladimir Putin only in the last uh, few weeks, uh, last few months. Was it? Absolutely. Mm. She's in favor of what she calls a multipolar world where basically uh, uh, she, it's, it's not might is right, but kind of. Mm. It, it's a very different relation to the UN, to international law. The, all international commitments look in, in Marine Le Pen's eye as constraints, problem for France, whereas I, I guess Emmanuel Macron would consider that there are more conditions for stability, prosperity and cooperation. Sure. And, and for instance, on climate, we talked about COP21. Marine Le Pen believes that the, the climate deal is a constraint on France and France should not have to abide by the commitments it made then. Whereas Emmanuel Macron sees it as a 
leverage that you can have on the US or China and other key actors. Mm -hmm. Now, you touched upon um, over the, 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 the status, if you will, of current French foreign policy uh, well, over the last five years under Francois Hollande. And you did mention the operations in Africa. Now, uh, Le Pen herself has visited Chad recently and she met with the forces from Operation Barkhane, which is the French... Uh, Counter-terrorism yeah, operation counter -terrorism across Sahel. Across the Sahel, exactly, uh, over five countries. Now, she has said that she wanted to put an end to France-Afrique. That's the special relationship between France and her former colonies. How does one do that? <laughs> I think every candidate to the French presidency over the last... 10, maybe 15 years, I've said that they want to put an end to the France. And they failed. Uh, and and <laughs> the relation between France and Africa have evolved a lot, but it doesn't yeah. mean that you are going to cut relation with uh, Africa. And even Marine Le Pen doesn't say she wants to cut the relation. She says, on the contrary, that Africa will be a number one priority. Mm. But when you go into details, it's a number one priority because she's she wants agreements on migration management. Mm. She wants the African country to manage the migration flow upstream so that downstream France is not on the receiving end of those flows anymore. That's obviously quite different of a policy than, for instance, uh, uh, Hollande has led. Uh, so how do you do that? Well, sh she mm. says, I, I don't want to interfere with domestic African affairs. Mm. The Africans uh, have to deal with their own stuff and African leaders will be my interlocutors and that's it. And that actually looks very much like France Afrique, where the key interlocutors were just the head of states and head of governments and civil society, uh, the, the people, uh, all the NGOs, local NGOs, the opposition parties, the human rights advocates were actually not so much interlocutors. And mm -hmm. one way that you can change politics is precisely that you broaden the scope of your interlocutors and you open the door and the transparency on the kind of relation that you have with those African countries. Okay. And also you focus less on just French-speaking Africa and have a kind of a broader, across-the-board cross African policy. Indeed. Now, let's look um, a bit closer to home here. I mean, we all we know about uh, Le Pen's platform. It's, it's far-right. It's very much, um, it's, one could say, France first. Um, but let's have a look then at Macron. How can, how can he counter this? I mean, will a Macron presidency, or can he make the electorate think that a Macron presidency will properly address the local issues here in France, such as Europe, terrorism, the single currency, and national identity? The first challenge for Macron, if ever is elected president and actually gets a majority in parliament, which is another uh, important condition for him to be able to, to do what he has in mind, is that those concerns are not shared. They're not the same across the board of, of the French voters. Sure. Voters are very ambivalent. Uh, uh, almost 80% of them are in favour of staying in the euro. And yet with Mélenchon and Le Pen, you have almost 40% of them who are willing to vote for someone in the first round who may open the risk of withdrawing from the euro. So that, that's a bit difficult, uh, a bit one of the difficulties for President uh, Macron or any president actually on how to deal with it. I think Europe will be the key for him. That's mm. the one issue that is put forward that he wants, he believes is the most eloquent is, is actually the first time that you have a, such a pro-EU uh, unabashed pro-EU uh, campaign, um, but himself acknowledges in what he says about it that there's a lot to change. There's a lot to change about the institutions, about the austerity policy, um, about how to democratize and how Europe can help protect the people. And, and there's definitely a key challenge for him, which is how to address the losers of globalization. Mm -hmm. Now, Manuel, we're running out of time here. We've only got about 45 seconds left. I just want a very quick question. Is Macron the great white hope for the EU27 and is Le Pen the great dark knight that could destroy it? I, I am sure that for pro-EU people, Macron's election would probably save them from the potentially fatal blow that Frexit would be, whereas Marine Le Pen seems to be the, the most compelling advocate of Frexit. But he's not going to be a solution to all the EU-related uh, issues. There will still be disagreements within the EU on the institution, on austerity policy, etc. And, and that will be a big problem for him to solve. Thank you very much, Manuel Lafont uh, Rapnoui uh, from the European Council on Foreign Relations here in Paris. Thank you for being on the programme today and from all of us here Thank at you. Paris Live PM. Have a good day. Bye bye.